Hello, this is Cornelius Lindsay, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So glad to have you here with me today. Um, I want to talk about identity. You know, at our church, I, I pastor a church in Atlanta, Georgia, called the Gathering Oasis Church, and we've been talking about identity. And oftentimes, what happens is throughout our life, we 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 begin to take on the identity that the world the world wants to give to us. Um, you know, when you were younger. It's the things that people called you. Uh, it was the things that they called you outside of your, your name. They called you that was outside of your character. <clears throat> and you never really quite knew who you really were because of what everybody else called you. I, I had somebody who said to me, they said, you know, Cornelius, I know who I am because I know my name. But that's just a proper noun. What are the adjectives that you have ascribed to the name? For example, you could be Elizabeth. But when you add the adjective of queen onto Elizabeth, the proper noun, then now it, it brings a, a level of royalty and distinction to it. That it's not just an Elizabeth, but now it's a queen Elizabeth. And a lot of times we'll take the name Harry, Sal, Saul, Paul, Bob, Tom, Antonio, Ronaldo, whatever name that we have, we'll take that name and we'll say, well, that's my name. I identify with that name. When people call me, that's the name that I answer to. Then it's the adjectives that you believed that should go along with your name. I'm fat. I'm ugly. I'm stupid. I'm, I'm, I'm illiterate. You know, I, I don't have this together or I'll never amount to this or I'll always be like this, or I'll never be able to get this. I'll never be able to understand me. You know, all these different things that we have made out to be what our identity is, when in actuality, our identity is firmly found in who Jesus is, not in any of this other stuff that the world wants to make it out to be. You know, the enemy wants you to believe that you're broken. He wants you to believe that you're bound. He wants you to believe that you're all these things that God says that you're not through and by Jesus Christ. He wants to believe that you're broken when he, when God is saying, but you're healed. The, the enemy wants you to believe that you're bound when, when God is saying, well, through Jesus Christ, you are free. Whom the son sets free is free indeed. The enemy wants you to believe that you're not beautiful, but Christ calls you beautiful. He calls you lovely, not because of your, not because of your, you know, the, the, your, your external features, but because of, because of the perfect work that he's doing on the inside of you. Identity is one of those things that as a child, it is, it, it has to be birthed within us. And I know so many adults who are walking through life right now and they're trying to figure out who they are because nobody has ever sat down to say, this is who you are. Or if they did, they were saying, this is who you are because this is what you've done. You know, a lot of times I walk around throughout the city, I'll travel around throughout the country and in other countries. And one of the main questions I get asked is, well, what do you do? What do you do? I like to tell people, why does that matter? I mean, I write a couple books. I mean, I go to the gym. I mean, I, I like to do a lot of things. What, what, like, what, what specifically do you mean? Well, what's your job? Because we usually attribute success or we, we, we attribute value based upon whatever thing that you do. So if I said I was a doctor, then maybe you might believe, well, maybe you have money. Or if I said that I was a janitor, maybe you look at me and you'll say, oh, you clean up things for a living. So then you may treat me differently based on what you know that I do. But my identity, our identity is not found in just what we do, but rather in who we are. We are human beings and whatever I be, then that comes out of me of what I will do. That's the, that's a great relationship we have with Jesus Christ. You know, so often the church wants to focus on all the things that we're supposed to do. These are all the rules and regulations. These are, this is the way you should dress. This is the way you should talk. This is the way you should think. This is the way you should act. Here's all the do's and the don'ts of the church. When Christ says, I encountered you for one purpose, that you can know who you are. And then when that work begins in you, then who you be will change what you do. I know that's not good English, but but, 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 but who you are, who you be, you're a, you're a being, you're a human being, not a human doing. Who you be will now transform what you do. I sit down with, with guys all the time, and the first question I like to ask them is, who are you? And they look at me and they'll say, um, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm an attorney, uh, I'm an accountant, uh, I play basketball, you know, I, I play golf, uh, I mean, I'm a father. No, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't ask you what you do. I ask you, who are you? And many of us, we can't answer that question. Why? Because we've never really been asked the question. We've never had time to sit down long enough and say, who am I? 
Or better yet, what have I believed that everybody else has said about me? You know, throughout life, it's not so much what people have said about you, but it's what you have believed that they said about you. You could have had a thousand people to say you were stupid, but it only took that one time for you to believe it, for you to now become it. And now you, your, your life begins to manifest in the actions that other people have called you. Because people have said that you were lazy, and then you said, I'm lazy. And you took on that identity as your own self, now everything you do is found in laziness. You procrastinate all the time. You don't get anything done. You show up to work late. Everybody called you a failure. 20 people called you a failure. It was the one time you believed it. And when you believed it, that's when your whole life changed. Why continue to go on? I'm a failure. Why continue to try? I'm a failure. Why continue to move on? I'm a, I'm a failure. And when that happens, you're shaping your identity. That's why it's so important to renew your mind, as Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, to renew your mind by the word of God, to renew your mind so that you can finally come to this place of identity and say, I, knew, I know who I am in Jesus Christ. I'm not a failure. I have the ability to be perfectly proficient in whatever ministry that God has assigned me to. I will fulfill my ministry. I'm not stupid. No, in the book of James, he tells me, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of him because he gives it to him liberally. I'm not rebellious. No, I'm an obedient child of God. I love his discipline. I don't run from it. I run towards it. I'm not overlooked. He loves me. He loves me. Every bad, broken, dangerous part of my life. He loves me. He, he, he yearns for me. And then he cleanses me. He convicts me. I am not because I am. I am because... The great I am is. And I find my identity in what he has called me. Not what the world tries to say that I am. Not in what I've tried to convince myself to be in the mirror. Because you know what we do. We put on the makeup. We put on the clothes. We put on the designer things. I mean, you've got the wigs. Whatever it is, you're trying to beautify yourself so that you can live up to an identity, live up to a standard that everybody else has called you. When in actuality, you don't really know who you are. I got to tell you this, you're not the sum total of the adjectives that people have described you with. You are who God says you are. And until you settle that, you'll never find fulfillment in what you do. I get it. The world tells you that, don't they? The world doesn't know what it's talking about. The world tells you, all you got to do is figure out what you want to do. Then we hear that throughout grade school. What do you want to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? And you never took a second to sit back and think, I don't know who I am. I'm an attorney, but I don't know who I am outside of practicing law. I'm a doctor, but I don't know who I am outside of practicing medicine. I'm a preacher, but I don't know who I am outside of preaching. I'm a banker, but I don't know who I am outside of banking. And then what happens is we don't, when you don't know who you are outside of what you do, then you find worth in what you do. Then when you don't do as well when you don't get the raise, when you don't, when you don't get all the things that you wanted to get, that you felt like you needed to get, the things you felt like you deserved to get because of all the great things that you do, when you don't feel like you live up to the expectation of all the things that you do, you crumble because you put all of your value and all your estimation in what you do, not in who you are. But if nobody else has ever told you, I want to be the first to tell you, you are loved. You are appreciated. You are given grace and mercy by our holy God. He loves you. He cares for you. He's merciful towards you. He's graceful towards you. He forgives you as you confess your sin to him. He is faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. This is what the holy God does for us. You don't have to be and take on all the adjectives everybody else has given you. You can be exactly who God says you are. And I believe you are who God says you are. Repeat this after me. Say, I am who God says I am. I am not who everybody else has said I am. Today, 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 I make it clear that I am 
who God says I am. The end. That's it. Amen. God bless you. And thank you so much for being with me. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe. Send it to your friends and your family. And when you do, let them know this is a new creature, a new creation. I'm a new person, and my identity has changed. In Christ I live, in Christ I die, and in Christ I am sustained. God bless you.